Hey again guys and welcome back. Today I am doing a review of this uh, electronic constant current load supplied for review by banggood.com. Um, the stipulation for me to accept this as a review unit was that I get to be completely unbiased. So they did not pay me for this review but they did provide it for free. The link is in the description below if you want to get your own. Now my final verdict is that this thing is good, it does its job, but it's not great. There are some features lacking, so make sure you check the chapters on the bottom in the description um, to go find out the parts of this review. Other than that, let's get started. So first things first, let's get into the core features of this. Um, there are markings for the in plus and in minus here, which are screw terminals, but I will tell you that it's not just these screw terminals. There's also a USB type A female, a um, USB mini, a USB type C, and a USB micro, which are also inputs. So all of these do take the input as well as this uh, barrel jack here. In the back here, there is a 12 volt DC in, which is actually the power supply for this unit. So it is not powered by the your input on this side, which is a good thing because that remains independent from this side. So whatever's going on here won't affect here and vice versa. It's got a decent sized screen. It has a decent size um, heatsink on it, which is pretty good. We'll take a look at that later. But I think it's time to power it up. So this unit is supplied with a 12 volt 1 amp power adapter to be that separate power supply I talked about. But let me show you how it functions and maybe you'll get some of the downsides of this. So first and foremost it opens up at this screen here and this mode button you just press and it scrolls through the screen. You can't go back and forth you just have to keep going forward. And if you keep going it goes into the menu. So this is for the backlight. This is the maximum voltage. It's settable. This is the minimum voltage. This is like your cutoff voltage, which is also settable. There's your maximum current, also settable. 10 amps is the max 150 watts. 150 watts is also settable, the maximum uh, wattage. And uh, this is settable downwards, not upwards. Okay, and it comes back here. And then if you just keep clicking, it'll go through the menus again. Now, let's say I've got this power bank here I want to test. I don't want to pull this power bank below the USB spec. Let's just say 4.5 volts to be sure. So I'm going to go and this is how I waited too long and I went out of the menu. So to uh, change a detail, you have to double press to go up and then press and hold to go up or uh, triple press uh, and then press to go down. So double press, it moves it up and then long press to go up. But as soon as it detected that we that, that, that I requested a 0.1 volt minimum, uh, the, the thing locks up because it doesn't see the voltage. So if I plug in this micro USB here on the power bank and turn on the power bank, now it sees more voltage so I can double press to go up and press and hold to hit a maximum. Now, if I accidentally go up too high, 5.2 volts, this unit is now locked. I can't go downwards, which would be triple press and hold. One, two, three, doesn't work. One, two, three, and hold, doesn't work. The unit is locked until it sees a voltage higher than that. So let's say you use this um, electronic load to drain the battery on this power bank, and this is your only battery, there is no way to get up th this voltage lower to get to use the machine again. You can't reset it, you can't power cycle it, nothing. And I'll prove that to you. So here we go, plug it back in. The thing is still freaking out. So the only way I found to recover from that situation is to bring in a separate power supply, give it power, like that. Now I can do the triple uh, click go down, press and hold, go down. And I can set it to something more sane. You know, I can even just fix it by double press and then 
keep going up. There we go, 4.5 volts. But as soon as I remove it, the unit freaks out and will not work anymore. So that's a big problem. This thing, it's a big shame because this thing is actually a fantastic unit, except for the fact that when you set the, the cutoff voltage parameter and your battery goes down below the cutoff voltage, you can't adjust it anymore. I can deal with going one way through the menus. I don't care. It's functional. It, it works. It's the bare minimum. It's probably something I would program. Probably not, but it's acceptable. But having the low voltage cutoff stop you from using the machine at all. And you see, the power bank shut itself off. So now the machine is unusable until you power it on again. Not cool. But anyways, to adjust the current, you are supposed to turn the fine and then the coarse. So I'm going to turn the fine and with the fine um, current pull, see there we go. Look we're already at 4.6. This, um, this thing is sagging. It's not a very good power bank. See the voltage is sagging there. 4.5. Look we're right at the threshold. As soon as I go up too high, boom. And look this is what it does. It power cycles because you hit the voltage, the load shuts off, the voltage recovers, and then the load turns back on. So it'll cycle like this ad infinitum. If you put this this thing to, to set, to test a battery, for example, and it just starts power cycling at the minimum of your battery, then at least you can run over and, and pull it off, your test is done. But then the test is done until you plug something else in. You have to plug something else in. You have to get that voltage up to fix the condition. See, and in this case, it just, it recovered. So anyway, so in this case, uh, 0.6 amps is the most I can pull out of this power bank using the uh, fine adjustment. So you can use the course, but the course ramps up a lot faster, as you can see. So yeah, the user experience and the user interface leaves much to be desired. This heatsink is fantastic and big. Uh, the fan only turns on um, at the behest of a temperature sensor. So that part's great. Um, just the software and the user experience is seriously lacking on this thing. Keeping the UI problems in mind though, this thing does function for a electronic load. So right here I have a 12 volt uh, 4 amp power supply attached and I was pulling a little bit of a current out of it here but uh, let me just adjust the course. Actually I think I like this screen better because you could see the, the voltage and the current a little bit brighter. But if I turn the course up it does track very well the voltage and the current. The current does stay constant as well. So I can go up here right close to the 4 amp range and then I can bring it in just nudge it up right up to the 4 amps. See the voltage is a bit saggy there. Okay this, this thing should be warming up. Just over 4 amps there so I have 4.2 amps and this will stay constant and because the heatsink is nice and beefy you know basically a computer power supply heatsink uh, this will take quite a while to heat up and this thing does a fantastic job if you don't have to rely on the minimum voltage cutout. So you can test batteries and stuff with this but you just have to babysit it. Not great that you have to babysit this thing but if you separate out the UI elements this uh, this thing is actually a very good load. And here we go we're still counting up we have 50 watts pulled here we have the amp hour and the watt hour uh, ratings and we have the time we have the temperature of that's 30 C that must be of the MOSFET so yeah that is starting to warm up but it's not hot yet pulling this thing down quite well we can even go see if our power supply will go into cutoff oh geez almost five amps out of this thing see if I can get a little bit more coarse here
drawing it down pretty strongly. Oh, wow, six amps. Hopefully I'm not damaging anything. I'm up to 70 watts as a 48 watt uh, unit. We did drop on voltage there. It's trying its best to keep up. Maybe I should uh, use a beefier power supply to test this thing. I have a, a cheap 24 volt power supply, but it should go up to a couple hundred watts. So I'm going to use that to try to pull uh, about the 150 watt maximum on this. Uh, I'm pulling it through really thin cables. I'm sort of at a, a lack of uh, decent cables in my shop right now, but it's okay. Uh, this should work just fine because 24 volts is double the voltage I usually work at. And here we go. It's actually set to 25 volts. Ooh, very nice. So I'll start pulling current off this. You'll probably hear the fan ramp up on the power supply. Not on the load though. We're at 50 watts on the load. Pull up and up and up. 100 watts. Oh, that was probably getting hot. No. Nope. Usually when a uh, cable starts to bend like that, it's because something was getting hot. Nope, it didn't. This cable is much thicker than this one. I think these are my custom ones and these are not. We just pull a little current. I, I swear, I think this is getting hot. Well, there we go, 116. Ooh, yeah, something's getting toasty. This one here. Hmm, let me get some better cables. Got myself a beefier cable. Uh, I might have to go find some uh, non-alligator clip ones, but let's see what happens when I pull a load on here. So 100 watts, the uh, system's having no issues keeping up. Crank it up a little bit more. 133 watts. Move up on the fine adjust so you can pull up to the maximum of 150. Oh, what above? Okay, so I'm gonna leave this cooking for just there. We go, got the fan up. We are just pulling a lot of current now. There we go. That poor power supply is just screaming. But uh, yeah, we are pulling, you know, the 150 watts out of it. Pretty neat. So it does work. The fan is keeping this cool. I'm going to shut this off before anything goes wrong. The um, power supply was going into the crazy coil line. I told you, it is a cheap power supply, and I'm feeding it through really tiny wires. So we had a little bit of a voltage drop through the wires there. So this here at this end was 150 watts, but at the other end, uh, it was much more. The unit is mostly cooled down from its 150 watt drag race there. Uh, so let's see if we can take this apart and see how it works. Now I think it's got these long standoffs here and this are these are nuts on this side so I think if we just take these screws out that should be enough to reveal the delicious secrets that are inside. And there we go. So we've got a little MOSFET there. Um, it's actually flipped on its stomach and this looks like a temperature sensor. So this part here is a B20100G and on the very top it says R009. And this guy, I'm tempted to flip it. I wanna see what kind of MOSFET it is. It's an IRF P 260M. Okay, has some thermal compound on it. So it clearly um, has this sort of CPU cooler on it, but uh, it's not quite a CPU cooler because the, the die in the middle is very small. 
and it looks like it was machined just for a MOSFET. So this is probably a purpose-built part. Quite interesting. It's got these little retainers that hold the fan on so you can actually unscrew it without unscrewing the fan. That's pretty cool. And then that says it's hot. Well, yeah, it would get hot. It looks like the MOSFET uh, signal is just right down here. I wonder if somebody could make their own user interface for this. Now there are like communication pins here. Let's see what kind of uh, microcontroller they used on this thing. Because there, there is RXD, TXD, and ground. If this is some sort of Arduino-y type thing, maybe some of the bright minds in the comment section can make a user interface that isn't terrible. Am I missing something here? Oh, maybe the knobs for the pots? Do these come out? They do. Okay, so that looks like it is just an LCD and button module. You can see the breakouts there. Uh, this button is linked to a single pin here on the side. And yeah, there's really nothing else. There's that LCD, not even a controller for the LCD, and that button. That is it. Everything else goes through the board. And here we have, you know, everything else is nice because we have really big fat tracks for the uh, power handling. You have even decent tracks for the uh, USBs and the barrel jack, but we just have a terrible inter user interface. I'm going to try to read the numbers on the micro on here. The microcontroller on here is completely blank. Um, this IC here is a DC-DC uh, buck converter IC, and the numbers should be on the screen for you right now. So yeah, I don't know what kind of micro this is. It's unfortunate that it's not something sort of open sourcey that we can hack. And uh, I think the last thing that would be interesting to see is this uh, current shunt here. So that's the current shunt coming right off the leg of the MOSFET and going to the ground. So ground side uh, reading. So would I buy one of these? That's a tough question. Um, the device itself functions really well. The cooler setup is well thought of. The fan doesn't run all the time. The fact that it's got separate power supplies. This is all good stuff. They put all the important USB ports. They put uh, 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 terminals. They put a 2.1 millimeter jack. They seem to have done everything right. And then when it came to the user interface and the user experience, they pooped the bed. So uh, as I'm just looking right now, this thing is like $26 Canadian at the time of recording on Banggood.com. If you needed an electronic load that was precise and accurate and repeatable, and you're only testing one kind of thing, you kind of like set it and you're babysitting it, this guy, this guy's great. This guy does the job. But if you're looking for something that has been completely well thought of from A to B, this is not it. If you don't have an electronic load and you only have, you know, 30 bucks Canadian to spend, this might be your ticket. But otherwise, um, I would probably wait and get something with a better user experience. So I'm really frustrated because they got most of the way there, but just couldn't hammer it home. If you want to check out the listing or just buy something with my affiliate link, doesn't have to be just this, there is a link in the description below. Um, but what do you think of this thing? Would you buy one? Does this suit your needs? Um, I know I'm a bit disappointed, so I'm going to be shopping for a better one when I get some money. Um, but for now, I guess I will be using this thing. I just don't know if I would be happy to own it if I would have spent my money on it. Thanks for watching.